Hi and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be an answer to the hashtag 3D printing on YouTube. I was tagged to do this by Chuck Hellebuck. Uh, link to his channel will be in the description somewhere. And basically there are six questions about 3D printing that people have been asking and it's been going around YouTube. So I'm going to do that right now. So the first question is, what was the first thing you ever 3D printed? The first thing I 3D printed ever was a demo piece on the DaVinci 1.0. I literally unboxed the thing, plugged the power in, went through the menu, loaded the filament and printed out the vase sample. Now, if you can imagine like a, a five pointed star as the base and as it went up, it, it twisted. It was about three inches high. Uh, I don't have it anymore because I set about it with a pair of pliers to destructively test it to see how rigid and how well the, the, the layers were bonded. Um, when I built the Prusa, and pretty much when I build any printer now, I like to print out these stretchlets. Now, this is a stretchy bracelet. It's available on Thingiverse. I'll, again, put the uh, link in the description. And this is printed out of ABS. It's not a flexible material. But as you can see, it's a very flexible, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, the reason I print these out is because after you've went through the, the entire bed level process, if you print this out, the first layer is just one perimeter, so it doesn't take very long to see whether it's going to stick to the bed properly or rip up. Whoops. So that's the first thing I printed out on the Prusa. Um, as you can hear, the the Hello B Prusa, the dual extrusion printer, is now working, and I've printed out stretchlets from each of the extruders to check the bed height and level and things. And the first cool thing I tried to print out was this cat. But unfortunately, as you can see, um, there's some kind of shifting problem with the two extruders because it's not supposed to be bumpy and holy. So what I did was I messed about with that and tried printing it again with some new settings. Can you see that? Yeah, no, probably not. And it's a, it's a whole ton better, but it's not perfect. So I messed about with the settings again and I tried printing these two squares. That's finished. Awesome. And the two squares are much, much better. Now, what's just finished on the printer there is a traffic cone. And that is being printed out to test the concentricity. Is that even a word? It is now. Of the rings as it switches colour. So it makes sure that extruder 0 and extruder 1 are completely aligned as it's building up. And, yeah, if that cools down before the end of the video, I'll rip it off and I'll show you. So, yeah, that's kind of like the first things I like to print when I get a 3D printer. Um, some of the longer term things I've printed. This is a cover for a USB memory stick. Um, the original cover destroyed. And I printed this part out. It goes on my key ring. Uh, it's pretty grotty because it, it lives it pretty much lives in my pocket with my keys. And, yeah, I've, I've had that for... Well, probably since March this year, and it's been absolutely fine. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much some of the longer term stuff I printed out, and the first things I print out when I like to to, to calibrate and test a printer. So moving on, the second question is a popular three D printer that you don't like. Um, well, this is not an easy question for me to answer because I think three D printing is awesome in any form. You know, there's kind of like the resin printers, which I think they're a little weird because you need to get all kind of like hazmat suited up to get the prints off and things. And, and it's not like the uh, the filament printers. But if I had to name one filament printer that seems pretty popular that I, that by everybody else, but I don't like it, it's the PrintBot Simple. If you can imagine this thing, it looks like a G-clamp. You've got the bed. You've got one arm for the z-axis, the bed moves this way, and then you've got one arm for the x-axis, so there's no support at this side. And I just think that's a bit weird for a printer design. So, I don't mean, I mean, I've never owned one, I don't know anybody with one. The videos I've seen of them, they do seem to print pretty good, but to me, I, I'm just not a fan. Just not a fan of the print bot symbol. So, there you go. The third question, name a popular 3D printer that everybody else seems to hate that I love. Well, there's, there's only one printer that everybody seems to hate that I love, and that's the DaVinci 1.0 or the DaVinci 1.0A. Because, you know, everybody seems to think, oh, it's not very good. As soon as you hit le auto bed level, it screws it up and everything. But, you know, if you do your research beforehand, if you're aware that you're going to put cartridges in the thing, 
um, are you aware of how much the cartridges cost? Then that's absolutely fine. The best thing about the DaVinci 1.0 is it prints out the box. You plug it into your PC or your computer or whatever. You load in a model onto it and you print it out and it just works. So all of these people who hate this thing because it's huge and bulky and all the rest of it, fair enough, it is a big printer. It is expensive to run. I mean, once you've kind of like changed the firmware on it and stuff, if you go that way, it makes it a lot cheaper. But yeah, out of the box, it works. So I love it for that. It's great. Question four is, what is your must-have 3D print gadget? Now, you're going to like this one because it's a cheap option. <laughs> it's something that I buy hundreds and hundreds of off eBay. That's right. It's a nail file. Now, these ones are about 180 grit on one side and 100 grit on the other side. They're curved, so you can get into sharp edges. They have a really sharp edge, so you can get into sharp corners really nicely. But the best thing about this is, to buy 10, it's about 2 quid. So, you can just go through these, and they cost pretty much nothing. And I'll show you how the effect it has. I mean, if you, if you look at the end of the tail here on this one, it's pretty gnarly, you know couple of quick rubs turn it over a couple of quick rubs again and you can see pretty quickly you're going to get that nice and smooth this piece had a couple of blobs on top whoops a couple of blobs on top and um, just rubbed it on a nail file absolutely brilliant so yeah best 3d print gadget cheap nail files from ebay brilliant so, question five, what is the best free or low-cost 3D printing software? Well, in my opinion, free always outweighs low-cost, because free is no cost. So, the best free software, in my opinion, is Autodesk Fusion 360. I went through a phase of using uh, Autodesk 123D Design, and I discovered that it wasn't structured, so... Once you'd sketched something and then extruded it, you couldn't go back and change that sketch. You would have to change the size of the extrusion. With Fusion 360, it's what they call structured CAD. So you can do a sketch and then you can do an extrusion. And along the bottom of the screen, it has like a lot of icons. And it's basically the steps that you go through to build up your model. Now, if you get halfway through your model and think, I need to go back and change the size because it's not tall enough. You can just go back to one of the first icons edit it and it'll bring up the dimensions and you can just change the dimension and the model will go bink, to a different size and then the entire thing will regenerate so that for me is worth its weight in gold you know fusion 360 i'm still getting used to using it but just for the fact that it's structured so much better than anything else that i've used in the past and the last question question six is what is your best 3d printing tip um, I don't know. I've been 3D printing for nearly a year now. And I've done an awful lot of research on an awful lot of printers and an awful lot of settings. So I, I reckon my best advice to anybody is... Well, it's it's going to come in three parts, this. First of all, print out your own stuff. Model it yourself and print it out. Thingiverse and Umagine are good sources to get stuff that's already been designed. But you have to be careful because some of the stuff on there, the CAD is not good. So if you want to design something, design it yourself in 3D software and print out your own design. The second answer is don't get disheartened when things go wrong. When I first started printing these, it took me about two days to get the first one to work. Because if the bed is off level by more than one layer thickness which is kind of like what's that 200 microns which is not a lot the entire thing screws up it rips up off the bed so when it all goes wrong don't get disheartened just make some changes and then print it again and the third thing is don't be afraid to mess with the settings i've done a lot of research into slicer that's with a three instead of an e and I've done a lot of testing on the settings and a lot of people out there will say things like, oh, you must not set this setting or you must not set this setting. Don't be afraid to mess with it. You know, create a profile which is a copy of a, a working profile or, or something that you don't want to lose and feel free to mess with the retraction. Feel free to mess with the extrusion percentages. Just 
just mess with it. That's the only way you're going to learn how this stuff works. You know, I mean, this this last week I have learned more about Slicer for dual extrusion than I have in the year that I've been 3D printing. And it's just because you go out there and you start messing with the settings. So don't be afraid. I very much doubt you'll be able to break anything just by messing the settings up. But just keep a copy of the settings you've got and, and mess with it. Just don't be afraid to make stuff. Don't be afraid to mess with it. And if somebody says, oh, you definitely don't need to do this or you shouldn't mess with this setting, that might not necessarily be true for your case because a lot of people say, oh, you don't print at a certain temperature, but your thermistor might read different to theirs. So please don't be afraid to mess with all the settings and just try and learn how to do it. So that's it. That That's everything. Now, it's, it's kind of customary to tag someone else to do this. Um, I don't know anybody else who's subscribed to this channel who, who actually puts up 3D printing videos apart from Chuck. Um, so even though they don't watch this channel, I'm going to I'm gonna tag James Bruton from xrobots.co.uk. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. This guy makes some amazing stuff. Um, I very much doubt you'll ever see this video and do this. But yeah, I'm going to tag James. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. This is my first video of the hashtag variety I find it a bit strange because it's kind of like social media and social networking but i'm sitting here talking to myself but that that's uh, that's by the by but uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed it and as usual please like comment and subscribe i've been steve thanks for listening yeah yeah okay this is me from the future i realize i forgot something at the end of the last video i said when the traffic cone was finished printing out i was going to rip it off the bed and show you it and it finished printing halfway through the video and i didn't show it at the end of the video so here it is there you go there's one traffic cone um i'm going to try and spin it round just so that you can see any imperfections in the layering but especially where the, the colors join now that is the calibration that i've been working on for the last week but uh there you go there's another what's the first thing you've printed catch you later